Now from Intel to RAP. Hard to segue there, but backed by popular demand, it's RAP with Rohan. If you don't know what I mean, take a look. Welcome back, folks. I'm Anna Hoffman from the Azure Data team here to talk about data. I'm really excited. We're going to get to talk about some of the latest data announcements here live at Ignite with our next very special guest, Rohan Kumar, the Corporate Vice President of Azure Data. Rohan, welcome and thanks so much for joining us today. How are you doing today? Hey, thank you for having me, Anna. I'm doing great. I hope you're doing well as well. Awesome, yeah, I'm great and better now. Uh, so in the keynote, you mentioned some of the huge growth we're seeing with Azure Synapse Analytics, 80% increase since last year and Azure Databricks nearly doubling in customers. What are you hearing from customers and why do you think we've seen such big growth in these areas? I mean, that's a fantastic question. You know, a couple of things what I'd say, you know, the approach we took with you know, Synapse uh, was actually quite unique in terms of you know, addressing some of the most important you know, uh, uh, areas of friction that we see as customers build out these analytic pipelines. You know, I think you know, there was a lot of research that went in as we worked with you know, lots of our enterprise customers who were building out these you know, uh, modern analytic pipelines, you know, disrupting their existing enterprise data warehouses. And the challenge that sort of came about, you know, it was sort of super clear, was around just the cost of stitching together multiple services, data integration, you know, data transformation, data warehousing, and then the whole friction that existed between the data engineers and the data scientists when it came to collaboration to do predictive analytics. So with Synapse, we took this approach of you know, looking at all these capabilities in a single unified product, right? which is in, in many ways uh, category defining. I mean, there's nothing like that that exists today uh, in, across any other cloud and where we actually brought together data integration, data warehousing, transformation, big data analytics uh, into a single product that supports both ANSI SQL, it supports Spark, uh, it supports provision resources, it supports serverless queries where you sort of you know, pay per query, and it has deep integration that we've built in with Power BI and Azure Machine Learning. So when we talk to our customers about it, you know, that this whole thing resonates really well. For a data engineer, life suddenly became really, really simple because now you have this low code experience of you know, building out these pipelines where a lot of the complexity around things like security, you know, VNets, uh, monitoring, deployment, et cetera, is all you know, taken care of by the product. So that, that sort of was huge. And frankly, you know, one of the things where we've, you know, where the reasons why we've actually seen a significant jump, especially since you know, COVID started, is because a lot of our, our customers you know, are talking to us about you know, how do we become more data driven, especially in this day and age when you know everything you know needs to sort of be very carefully you know monitored and 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 resourcing wise you know how do we sort of leverage data to get those insights and that's one of the reasons why we're seeing a significant adoption in Synapse both from strategically how we've reduced the pain point time to insight and the cost you know of of getting those insights uh, by the deep integration that we've built across products so that's that's what I'd say. Awesome. Thanks, Rohan. And yeah, I think you're spot on, like time to insights is just huge. If we can reduce that, then it helps in a lot of different ways. Now, another game changer that, you know, we announced last year at Ignite, actually, we sat in an interview. It was pretty different, but uh, we sat in an interview last year and talked about the announcement of Azure Arc. Now, a year has gone by and obviously we have some announcements around Azure Arc enabled data services. It's come a long way. Can you share with us how this product or really set of products is kind of evolving and changing the game for our customers? Yeah, absolutely. Another, you know, uh, uh, you know, announcements that we did around data services for Azure, which I'm like really, really excited about. You know, from the very beginning, you know, if even you know, you look at the whole uh, 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 back in 2009 was the very first time when we announced Azure at the Professional Developers Conference and, you know, on the data side, we've been, you know, uh, with the core Azure platform since the very beginning. And one thing that was very clear to us was the fact that hybrid and multi-cloud is going to, you know, be the way of the future, right? In fact, I always sort of joke about this where it's actually fascinating to see you know, you know, all our peer cloud providers now jumping on the hybrid bandwagon and talking about how important it is in the last couple of years. And from the very beginning, we've had that perspective, right? And if you look at the investments we've done around Azure Stack, and you know, and of course, which with our, we've sort of taken that a step further of really, you know, you know, providing our customers with the choice that they have to manage their hybrid data, you know, data state. You know, we're starting with, of course, 
you know, SQL managed instance and, and, and Postgres hyperscale, we have essentially made it really, really simple to deploy these in any uh, environment. Is, and the only expectation is an endpoint that supports, you know, uh, uh, Kubernetes containers. All the tooling that our own engineers use to manage these services in the cloud, single third deployment for high availability, disaster recovery, backups, et cetera, is all built into the product. So you can scale up, scale down, you know, do automatic patching. The deployments are uh, very, very seamless. So the feedback actually has been pretty amazing. And you know, you've spoken about you know, customers like KPMG, Ferguson, et cetera, who, who essentially look at the value that's coming right from, from Microsoft, where we're not forcing them into a specific design point, or you have to sort of you know, use an appliance model, or you, know, you have to modernize your you know, application or workload, because in many cases, that's just not a practical way in which you sort of approach a customer, right? So with Arc, that's one of the things I feel is very, uh, uh, from a strategy standpoint, where we sort of approached it uh, in a way that we sort of meet customers where they are, uh, actually is resonating really, really well. And, you know, in, in many ways, I'd say it's just the beginning. We're sort of, you know, launching it in preview after getting significant amount of feedback from our customers in terms of like, you know, what works for them, what doesn't, and I'm sure we learn more. Uh, but it's it's a fairly, I'd say, in terms of uh, uh, the level of, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, feedback that we've sort of you know, heard from our customers, it's actually fairly major milestone in the journey that we have with Hybrid. And I can't wait to sort of you know get a lot more feedback around this, and and uh, as we sort of move towards GA, and even benefits like you know it's evergreen SQL, you never have to worry about uh, you know end of support ever again. And while this was fantastic in Azure, now the fact that we're bringing that capability to uh, on premises, to private clouds, to other uh, uh, you know hyperscale clouds that we have in the industry is just game changing. And we're already seeing this. We're already seeing customers, for example, in AWS. We're running maybe in EC2, RDS, et cetera, are sort of, you know, moving on to ARC. Awesome. Thanks, Rohan. You know, I, I love this kind of like Azure data kind of everywhere, or anywhere that you want it. And, you know, another example of this is Azure SQL Edge. And being the Azure SQL SQL Server person that I am, I was super pumped to see that Azure SQL Edge has gone GA. Um, I'd love to hear your take on how customers are finding success with Azure SQL Edge and kind of how we're innovating in this space. Yeah, no, I think it's a fantastic question, Anna. And, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the whole Azure SQL family as well. I think, you know, fundamentally, you know, the, the big uh, uh, driver of edge computing essentially is a lot of these next gen applications that are building up where pretty much everything that you see uh, on, on the edge, it could be a very small device, a manufacturing plant, you know, submarine, you know, down in the ocean, a cruise liner, whatever the case may be, right, where there is such a uh, shift that we see happen in, you know, the modern app development you know, paradigm where the edge itself needs to become intelligent. The edge itself is going to connect, collect, collectively, if you look at all the edge devices, and they're going to be like hundreds of billions of them uh, in, in the foreseeable future, where a total volume of data that's actually going to be collected at the edge is going to be much more than uh, the cloud itself, right? So that it was it was very, very important for us as we were trying to enable this to build out a paradigm where developers had consistency across the edge, across their private clouds and in the public cloud, right? And so that was a big motivation. And, you know, several, you know like multiple years ago, we basically looked at, okay, do we go build something completely new? And, you know, it's, it, in many ways, it, it probably lands up being a little easier because you don't have any backward compatibility to deal with. But we sort of, you know, went with the idea of, look, we need to have SQL running on the edge because we wanted to sort of go make it really easy for the 7 million plus developers, .NET developers, and, you know, other open source developers who sort of are already used to this database, right? And how do we essentially make sure that all their skills when it comes to manageability, security, built-in AI, all the work that we've done around this extensible architecture where you can, you know, train models, uh, you know, inside a big data system and then load those models for scoring inside the core SQL engine, which becomes a very critical scenario at the edge. All that just works. So there was a lot of innovation that, you know, has gone into reducing the footprint while maintaining uh, all the, you know, the value that the core SQL engine provides. And now, you know, SQL Edge runs on ARM devices, right? Which is fantastic to see, like low powered ARM devices, you know, the whole footprint is, you know, less than 300 megabytes, which is really fantastic. 
And the other thing that I'm really excited about is the work that the team has done to support time series and streaming analytics right at the edge inside uh, the core uh, Azure SQL engine. I think that's going to be a game changer if you look at the kind of data uh, that is being collected uh, at these edge devices. Um, is, is very much you know falls into that category. So supporting time series, supporting streaming analytics, and and supporting the fact that intelligent decisions can be made within the data uh, that exists inside uh, Azure SQL DB Edge is going to be really really transformative for developers because now they don't have to worry about the deployment uh, 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 at the time that they're building the application, and uh, you know it can just extend into the environment of their choice. So it is. It's one of those things where when I look at Ignite, there's just been so many announcements, but Azure SQL Database Edge, uh, as you sort of call out, Anna, is, is probably very foundational for our future. Awesome. Thanks, Rohan. Now, I think we have time for one more question. This is kind of a big one. Uh, what's next? Wow, <laughs> that is a big one. I mean, you know, like, look, I think all up, if I essentially take a look at just across the breadth of you know the azure data platform i feel really really good about the you know the services that we have to offer when it comes to operational databases you know the azure sql family cosmos db of course has been game changing for a lot of the new and modern applications you know the work we've done around you know postgres and the hyperscale support i think that has sort of been pretty amazing so i feel really really good around the operational databases, both on the proprietary side and the open source side. Now, when you look at analytics all up, I think with Synapse, you know, we've, we've absolutely changed the game. And, and I think the investments around, with the focus around reducing the time to insight, reducing the complexity for analytic workloads and the deeper integration that we're building out with, you know, services like Power BI, AML, Databricks, et cetera, is going to make a, a, a pretty phenomenal difference. You know, one area, you know, just we've sort of, you know, uh, 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 not spoken about very broadly, but just as a teaser for us, you know, governance of data is going to be huge. Uh, that's a thing, you know, again, like going back to what we're hearing from our customers. So, you know, what I essentially say is, you know, you can obviously expect as we've sort of spoken, you know, broadly about our investments in the catalog and the governance platform. That's another area uh, uh, we're, you know, uh, 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 we're going to be talking a lot more about in the future. And of course, just when I look at the scalability, security, performance, uh, you know, all the stuff within Azure SQL, within all our other data services, operational data services, analytics, uh, is going to continue to be an investment. And there are uh, a couple of other big things when I th think about the next maybe uh, horizon to horizon three that we are working on, which you know, uh, I guess uh, it's it's more uh, falls into the stay tuned category. Um, you just in you know overall in the space. I think the, the set of innovation that we expect that will happen, you know, over the next few years is going to be significant. And uh, and uh, we're very much, you know, uh, uh, you know, looking at the cutting edge. Of course, there's things like security, you know, confidential computing. We have sort of, you know, seen uh, uh, investments that started off with always encrypted and SQL, you know, are going to come to, you know, all the other uh, data services. And maybe I should stop before I start sharing things which are <laughs> maybe a little <laughs> bit more confidential at this point. But no, I mean, just across the board, there's just a ton of innovation going on and there's lots and lots of excitement. And I couldn't be, uh, in, in many ways, uh, you know, when I look at my, even my career at Microsoft, I think this is definitely the most exciting time to be in. Awesome. Well, you know, Rohan, it's always a pleasure to talk to you and interview with you because you bring such an energy and I think that energy is contagious and we're all excited to be on your team and also I think externally. So thanks so much for sharing this with us today. I also want to give a special shout out to those of you streaming live from wherever you are. I know I'll be tuning in to some of the Ask the Expert sessions for Azure SQL Edge and SQL Migration. So I hope to see you again soon. Thanks again, Rohan, and enjoy the rest of your Ignite. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. You can't predict the